What's a shape with four sides called? And don't say a square. A shape with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. That probably again is spelt wrong, but I don't care. So, quadrilateral. Obviously, the most famous quadrilateral, the most obvious one, is a square. A square has all the sides the same. All the corners are right angles. Okay, all the lengths are the same, all the sides are right angles. Pretty easy. If you don't know what a square is, then you really are having problems. So, square. What's next? Well, what's next? We've got a rectangle. This has got two sides of the same. And again, it's all right angles. I'm, I prefer the name oblong, really. I always liked oblong in school, but we've got to call them rectangles. Okay, more shapes with three with four sides. So we've got a trapezium. Now there's two types of trapezium. We've got trapezium one like this. Okay, and we've also got one that looks like this. Basically, thing with the trapezium, it always has two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. So, two parallel sides and two not. By parallel, we mean they basically run straight along exactly the same direction as each other. So, this is called a square based trapezium because it's got a sort of squarish base. So, we need to know an equation for the area of a trapezium. We're actually given it in our exam booklets. An area for a trapezium is a half A plus B H, where this is A, this is B, and this is H. So it's half top plus bottom times height. So with this one, it'd be, this would be A, this would be B, and this would be h. Okay? So half a plus b times h. Right. More shapes with four sides. So we've got a rhombus. Now, the thing with a rhombus, these two angles are the same. And these two angles are the same. Okay, and all sides are the same. Sorry, I didn't write the main one for this. So that's a trapezium. Rhombus, all the sides are the same length. And that's a rhombus. Very, very similar to the next one, which is a parallelogram. Basically, a rhombus is a pushed over square and a parallelogram is a pushed over rectangle. So, parallelogram, again, these angles, opposite angles are equal to each other. And two sides are the same. Okay, and the way to work out an area for one of these is just similar to how we work out the area for a triangle, but this is the base, this is the height, it's just base times height. It's the same for both of these, it's just base times height, there's no half in it, it's just base times height. Okay, there's only one of the shape we've got with four sides and that is a kite. So a kite again, these two sides are the same, these two sides are the same, but it's in a slightly different way. So this we just call a kite. And the general way of working at the area of a kite is you have to split it up. 
into two triangles. You've got a triangle here and a triangle here, and then you have to work out the area of both the triangles. So there we go. That's all our four-sided shapes, our quadrilaterals. And we'll be asked lots of questions. Obviously, it's just quickly just finishing off with the area of the square is just the sides are the same, so it's just a squared, where a is the length of one of the sides, and if we have a and b for a rectangle, the area is just b times by a. <coughs> Good time to discuss area actually, because we need to make sure we understand what we mean by the term area and by the term perimeter and by the term volume. So the perimeter of a square would be a plus a plus a plus a. It's the distance all the way around it is what the perimeter is. So that equals the peri perimeter. It's distance all the way around. Okay, for a rectangle it would just be a plus a plus b plus b. So 2a plus 2b, that would equal the perimeter for a rectangle. Now area always has to have two length terms times together. So an area must always have either a squared in it or two length terms times together. <clears throat> a perimeter must always just have a length term on its own. So a perimeter could be a plus b or 2a plus 2b, but you can't have two length terms times together for a perimeter. And a volume must have three length terms times together. So for a cube, it'd be a cubed, or it could be a squared b, or it could be a, B, C. As long as there are three length terms times together, you've got yourself a perimeter. <clears throat> so, there are some questions on this and on areas and perimeters and things of quadrilaterals and other random shapes in the booklet. So if you have a go at doing those now, we'll then move on to regular uh, polygons and just recap all of those ones.